What's up everyone? I am an ineffable NPC, also known as Casey Sunshine, also known as the self-proclaimed Disco Inferno of Burlesque. And if you are here and have been with me since 2006, bless you. <laughs> if you are watching this, it is December 25th, 2023, Christmas Day. Happy Holidays to everyone out there. Thank you so much for stopping by. I apologize if you've we're expecting me to play guitar, but I don't do that a whole lot anymore. My hands hurt. A lot has happened in 15 years. I know, I know, I completely disappear off the internet for 15 years and I come back like, hey! <laughs> I'm restarting my channel up so that I can share some of my infinite amounts of knowledge with all of you. Uh, so for sewing, crafting, making, creating, I do almost all of it, pretty much all of it, a lot of it, a lot of it. I do a lot of it and I'd like to share that. So I hope you find something helpful within this video. Last year, I made this skirt. This skirt was a stash buster. So I just had a lot of things in the color green, several different colors of green fabrics and materials, ribbons and bows and trimmings and trappings and things of that nature. And I said to myself, well, I should be a Christmas tree. I looked up on the internet. All I found for Christmas tree dresses was people decorating their dress mannequins as Christmas tree dresses. And I said, that's beautiful. That's gorgeous. I want to be the Christmas tree. Me. Me. Christmas tree. And that's when I cobbled the skirt together. The skirt is a modified hoop skirt. I dyed it green. I redid the boning on the inside. And I put the fabric on, I sewed the tool on, I installed the lights, all of that. I also made a headpiece. Hold the applause on the headpiece. I will show you how it is installed at the end of the video. Please enjoy this video of me making a more family friendly top for this dress. And I'll see you at the end. Here's me putting my Christmas tree dress up. I do not own a dress mannequin. I use a step ladder, or rather a small ladder. I guess it's not a step ladder, it's just a small ladder. Here's the panel that I put on the front to cover up the exposed boning. That boning had to be exposed because the dress was a little too small on my waistline. This fabric panel is just safety pinned to the waistline, which is the same satin ribbon that ties it together in the front. Now for some sweet, sweet slow motion Christmas tree footage. Bring it in. Look how gorgeous. Look how gorgeous. This fabric came that way, that gold fabric. I bargain binned it from the remnant section of Joann's. And it's great because it came like this. I didn't have to do anything to make it sparkly. It came beautifully done. The tool was ruffled onto the skirt, and here's the full look. I forgot the batteries. Takes the big boys. 3D batteries each side. Let's put them in. Now, was there a way to do these lights up without having to use 3D batteries on each side? Of course. But this was a Stash Buster project and these lights were what I had, so I used them. They have several different settings. They're meant to go outside, so they have a light sensor timer on them, and they run forever. Forever and ever and ever and ever. I wore this dress for eight hours at the event, four hours each day, and they were on the entire time and they're still good. Here's some slow motion on the lights. Ooh, ah, uh, this is my favorite setting where they blink from white to multicolor. There is one strand on each side, so if you don't turn them on at exactly the same time, you blink at different times. And here it is with the lights on. You can barely see the light strands. That's what I'm showing here. If you look carefully, Right where my hand is, there's one light bulb right there. But the tool does a pretty good job at hiding it. So I'm, I'm not mad at it. People don't even know I have them until I turn them on. 
So this is all well and good and fine. I have another skirt panel to go full around in the front. And I'm going to wear leggings underneath, but that's not the problem. The problem is I'm going to a family friendly event and this is currently a burlesque costume. The top is a big green tool boa of the same color green as there, worn as a wrap, and the top underneath that is, and as soon as I type that I'll have to show you. So, this, as, as proud and as beautiful as this is, you know, I hand beaded the fringe. This is my first time really doing hand beaded fringe. As beautiful and sparkly and cute as this top is, uh, th this will not work for a family friendly event. So we'll make a new one. And for that, I went to the thrift store. So what I did was I thrifted a blazer set. It's like a blazer jacket top and a skirt set made out of a nice cotton blend lace and some kind of silk blend lining. Here's the problem though, it don't fit. It, it, it don't fit. It's way too small for me. I was not even that small in high school. So that needs to change. And let's do that right about now, shall we? Measurements time. We need to get some measurements of uh, what I actually have going on and what's going on here so we can plan to deconstruct. Here's me getting the bust measurement and being a little disappointed in myself. <laughs> I don't know. Approximate waist measurement, bicep measurement so I can check the sleeve. Approximate arm length measurement, again, for checking the sleeve. Measuring the shoulder to see how much room I have in that department. And this last one is to check the overall length of the jacket. Okay, and now let's measure the jacket. I'm just showing you some basic areas here where I measured the bust, the length, the width of the shoulder, and the sleeve length to see how things match up. Please excuse my terrible handwriting, but so this is what we have. These are my measurements up top, the measurements uh, that exist currently here on the bottom. And as you can see, so the bicep, we are lacking in about three inches there. Length of arm, way too short. You got 17 inches of length here. We need about 22. Neck to shoulder needs to be six inches. It's only at four. Waist, 30 inch. Waist needs to be at least 46. Uh, bust and the neck to the hemline, which is from there all the way down, or rather shoulder to hemline not long enough either and we should have enough fabric because we have a whole skirt so let's do it welcome to the couch <laughs> first thing we're going to do is get rid of the shoulder pads i do not need them i have a prominent shoulder they're held on with tiny little strings we're just going to take them out There we go. All done. Now we're going to dissect the arm. And we're just going to do that at the seam on each side. I'm not going to make you suffer while, while I seam rip through this. Just to uh, let you know what I'm doing here. As I pick the sleeve, the seam of the sleeve apart, the lace is separating from the lining. As I go along separating, I'm going to pin to make sure these parts stay together and I don't have to fidget with them further down the road. They'll stay 
flatter until a, a later point in time when I when I need to take it all the way, all the way apart. Okay, sleeves are gone, but <laughs> here's the issue. We're going to add a panel in the back and a panel on each side. And I'm going to seam rip that and then I'll uh, come back when I show you the uh, panels we got. I think the length is fine because the skirt comes up quite a bit. So we'll keep the length. We're going to rip it apart and then I'll come back when I uh, have the panels prepared. Welcome to the floor. So here is what we have going on. I've ripped up each side. We are still intact at the shoulder seam. We are now ripped up on each side. We're going to lay this on this piece of paper here and come up with a pattern to insert onto the side. We're missing about 16 inches off the waist, which would be 8 inches on both sides. We will make each one 10 inches, which will give us half an inch of seam allowance on each side. Did I girl math right? I'm not, I'm not sure, but let's find out. Here I'm just laying out the piece to try and get some sort of idea of what is going on. We're going to make sure it's at least nine inches in the middle and we're going to let it naturally taper down at the bottom and the top. And we're just going to pray <laughs> to that, that that works. It ends up working out. Girl math always ends up working out one way or another. So I'm just measuring the center here and trying to visualize how big I have to make this and include a little bit of seam allowance as well. Now this is not a very fitted jacket. It was, but it's not going to be once I'm done with it. I'm going to have plenty of room. It's going to be more on the comfy side. So I'm not too worried about being exact. using a little artistic license to recreate the curve. I wasted a lot of money on art school. I might as well use it, right? Right. So here's what we came up with for the insert panel for our side panels. Art school must have worked in a little bit because I can write in any direction. And I just marked front, back, top, and bottom on there. I'm going to go ahead and seam rip up the skirt now. And I'm going to do it at the back so that I can salvage this nice zipper. And there is also a split here. So I'm just going to rip this small section here and save this zipper and this nice clasp. And I'll see you back when I'm done. As I started cutting the pattern out, I decided I don't trust myself. Before I cut it out of the fancy fabric, I'm going to cut it out of this leftover piece of bed sheet that I have. It's a cotton blend, and that lace and fabric is actually a cotton blend. It should give a little bit of stretch, but that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to cut that out, and then we'll pin it in, see how it fits before we cut out the lace. Making a mock-up is always a good idea, especially if you have a very limited amount of fabric like I did in this case. I ended up just having enough to make the two panels. The second panel I actually had to hodgepodge together to make sure the lace detail on the bottom of the jacket lined up. I'll give you a little close-up on that a little later in the video so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. But there was only so much fabric I had to work with because the garment was rather small to begin with. Also, please use sharp scissors when cutting fabric. Please. All right, we are all pinned up here on the sides. There it is, and let's see. Let's see if I mathed right. Let's see if I did enough math. Let's button it up. I get ridiculously happy when the math works out. This fit so well, it's kind of silly. 
I cobbled it together and it just worked out. My whole plan is working out. You can see the joy on my face. Look at that. Oh my gosh. It fits. I was stunned. I'm, I'm still in shock a little bit. Just a little shocked, you know, that it actually worked out. That's the joys of making a mock-up. Yay! It fits. So we got buttons all the way down. The bust is it's still a little tight in the bust, but that's fine. I'll just strap them down. But this seems pretty good. Pretty good. So I'm going to cut the panels out of the skirt fabric. I'll show you that real quick. There's one small issue. The issue is this small lace detail on the bottom. Luckily, it is also along the edge of this skirt. So when I cut the panels up, I'm going to match up the lace edge. So I still have that nice lace edge. This is lined. So I will keep this lining because this is lined. And I'll see you back when I have that cut out. Hi, we're finally at the sewing machine. <laughs> it's fun. We have our pieces. We have pinned them together. We are going to top stitch them. And then we are going to top stitch along the edge of each place where we're going on the side where we're going to place those insert panels on top. So that way we can just stitch them down flat because this already has a turned over seam that I kept from before and that'll be that. So I'll see you after that is done. And now for a short sewing interlude. If you've been enjoying the music you've been listening to in the background of this video, it is a song that I mix just for this video. It is available on my SoundCloud and it is called Nivius Trudge. We're going to work on the sleeves now and I have decided that find the other sleeve here oh I ripped them both apart okay these sleeves are actually a puff sleeve see the puff here is the structure underneath so that's pretty intense puff sleeve if I try to add length I'm going to have to contend with these buttons and with more of the hem here. So I think I'm going to keep the sleeves shorter 
but I will use less fabric and spend less time if I just add the panel underneath to make this large enough to fit in the new armhole. Here is the new armhole and we're going to have to add maybe three to four inches on each side. It's a little hard to show you, but I will cut that out. I will pin that up and we'll get that on and moving right along, moving right along. Here is the insert I have come up with for the sleeve. This is probably, it should be tapered more because it's going to give me more room at the wrist. So I guess we'll, you can always tailor it later if it's too much. The other sleeve, I didn't have enough fabric, so I had to butt up the two end pieces. So there's a sleeve, seam that runs down the middle, but the lace hides all that, so we love that. We have a nice detail here, and we're going to put them into the sleeve. It's done. Here we go. Here we go. Now, the problem... problem is that the sleeves, being that they are much bigger, the structure of the poof um, has collapsed. They are a lot bigger here, so we have a lot of room, and, and they bunched a bit, which is okay. It's okay because uh, the dress itself is so big and poofy that I think being bigger and poofier is going to be just fine. It's going to look good. It's going to look cute. Let me back up a bit more. Not working. Fill up these buttons. Nice. Yeah, give us a little spin, will ya? There it is. There it is. Looks good. And it fits. It fits. There's a lot of room here, so it's not as tailored anymore. But again, that's fine, because the dress is poofy. I'm not going to cinch it in. I have room here where I could cinch it in, put a seam, and structure it some more, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I also did not have to do anything to the back, which is good because there is a large applique. What is it here? A large applique, which I would have had to take off and then insert the panel and then put the applique back on. So we didn't have to touch the back sides are done. You can see the lace detail down on the bottom. I hit it pretty well so it doesn't look like you know some big uh, panels were inserted. Here's the next problem. The next problem is as I was sewing it I did find some staining discoloration on this top. So I don't think I'm going to, I was going to hand brush, hand paint, gold detail onto this and do some sequining and beadwork and stuff like that. But I actually think now I may just dye it green. I did dye the bottom part of the skirt. So I think I'll dye this green. It's a cotton, the lace is a cotton blend. So that part should at least dye pretty well. I'm going to do a test on some of the fabric and we will see if it dyes. If it does, then I'll dye the top. I'll add some beads. And that will be it. Good news everyone. I did a test dye and it actually turned out pretty good. I did it with cold water because as I started to do this I was afraid that the warm water or hot water dye would shrink this fabric which would undo all the resizing I just did. So I did it in cold water and even even the lining took a little dye. It's silkier fabric, which is kind of what this hoop skirt is underneath. So that's a lighter green. It matches pretty good. And then this green, it really goes with the tool. So let me set it on there, back up. 
blends right in. This is going to be great. It's going to be great. Let's do the whole jacket now. It's done. It's perfect. <laughs> Look at Look at It's like perfect. It's literally like perfect. Now it looks a lot lighter on the camera, actually. Let me turn the light off. Gorgeous. Now, the dyeing process, of course, did, well, in this case, anyway, it did not dye the plastic buttons that are this white, pearl-ish sort of plastic. There are five on the front. There are three on each sleeve. So I went to the thrift store to fix that because I'm not paying full price for buttons. I got a couple of real, real... Just marvelous 80s, 90s examples of fashion here. But the buttons are fabulous. This little number dress with the buttons all the way down. Anthony Richards, made in USA. 40% polyester, 60% acrylic, half off. So I paid about four bucks for this. And I'll give you a close up of the buttons. They are uh, gold. Oh my gosh. Number two. I found this little number. Da da da. Look. And this is connected all inside. That's, that's all one piece. Made to look like it's two pieces. Cute. Pay about five bucks for this. It is NY. S-A-K-E. Is it sake? Size 14? Maybe. <laughs> but the buttons are just a smooth, shiny gold like with a rim. And yeah, so that's what we're going to do next. We're going to do the buttons. Okay, I'm back. And buttons are done. And look how perfect they are. Look at this. Look. Look. The side, the buttons on the side don't do anything. They're just decorative, and they kind of jingle like little bells. I probably should have put some bells on there. Prime example of how just swapping out some decorative findings can really just set a piece off and take it to an another level. These are so beautiful. I'm going to try it on. Now, I hear what you're saying, but those buttons are much bigger than the other buttons. How do they fit through the holes? Well, before I sewed them on, I just kind of forced them through the holes a little bit until they took the shape. <laughs> they are still a little stubborn, snug, but it works. It works. It'll work in over time, and it'll be just fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Oh, they're so pretty. I'm so pleased with myself. I'm just pleased as punch. Is that the expression? I think it is. This is just so freaking cute now. I'm really excited about it. Now, what I wanted to do was the little lace details. I'll show you close up. These little lace details all down the front. And there's one at the side. There's the one on the back. It's, uh, where is it? Right. It's here. I actually wanted to paint those with some gold paint, gold fabric paint, but I don't have any. I have every single other color except gold. So I may not do that. I also have beadwork I want to do on it eventually. That's not going to get done before this weekend. But I do want to add some enormous outdoor ornaments to the boa that goes with this. And I will show you the boa. Ta-da! 
got two sparkly tassels on the end. It is made out of the same two different colors of tulle as the skirt is made of. And it's rather floofy. But I think adding some really big, ridiculous outdoor ornaments to it is going to be adorable. I will dig those out tomorrow and I will come back and we will do that. True to form, I cannot find an entire giant storage container full of four, five, and six inch outdoor ornaments to put on this boa. So I'm not going to. However, the event is tomorrow. So I'm going to continue to shuffle around my house and see if I can find maybe some more ornaments. I have I have like three that are gold and green, which is the color scheme I'm going for. But three will not work. Three is not enough for this arm length boa. So I guess we'll see what I find. Day of the show. I found ornaments for my boa. And I'm going to stand in this parking lot and put them on. Of course, I cannot go to the thrift store and not buy everything. So I found a Hoberman spear as well. Here are the ornaments. The second ones I showed you are glass. And I ended up going with the first ones because they were plastic. Now here is some footage I took of the dress, so I'd be able to get a little bit of an idea of what it looks like at night. Back it up. Beep. Beep. I did not take a lot of footage inside because there was a lot of people there. It was very crowded, and it was hard for me to walk around because my dress was very floofy. <laughs> Hi, Santa. Hello, Christmas tree. How are you doing today? I'm a little full. A lot, of, lot of fat. Ooh, oh my. Uh, give you a little close up on the, uh, the hat there. Here are my sparkly light bulbs. And success. Day one of success, walking around. Uh, I'm going to go walk around Saturday as well. I'll have my mother with me, so I might be able to get a little more footage. And I think a couple hours Sunday. Sure. But we'll see. Yeah. When you click the button, it'll see it. The icon will turn red. Yes. And then it's going. Sparrow. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I didn't get that much footage. <laughs> the camera is new, and neither I nor my mom know how to operate it very well. So I have to wait for it to snow again. Once it snows, I will make a video of this dress out in the snow. Ah, I guess we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So this, this is the headpiece. It's a little tall. It's hard to fit it all on camera, but I'm gonna give you, give you a close up here of what's happening. This is a small tree that you would display maybe on your coffee table, end table, what not, what have you. The base, oh, it's got hair all over it. Oh, that's cute. The base is, I believe, two layers of cardboard sandwiched together with hot glue with a wire in between for the shape. You can see I can actually bend it out a little more. It's sort of bent to the shape of my head. The Christmas tree is glued within an inch of its life onto the base of this. There is a comb in the front to push back and secure onto the hair. And here is what's going on in the back. This is a loop that is also hot glued under the Christmas tree, sandwiched in between the Christmas tree and the base. It's a loop back here. The light packs are attached to the loop. And then at the back, there is a large elastic strap. I'll turn the lights on here. 
There's the lights. And they go all the way up to the top. They are also in the tree itself. You can see now they're off. And that's pretty easy to access the little switch right through my hair. But I'll show you how it goes on. The first things first, we need our hair piece. Let me turn the lights off. I'm going to put this on the floor for the moment. The next thing we need is some more hair because I don't have enough of it. This is a topper or a ponytail in the same, It, I mean, it looks like my hair. I bought it. It's mine. It has a comb on the top and it has this, a comb on the bottom and it has a pull string. Next, two substantial claw clips because I have very thick, ridiculous hair and hair ties. I use two to do the ponytail up at the top or uh, the ponytail in the back and then one this one's way too big usually use like those little rubber band things but I can't find any right now to do the little pony up up in the top of my hair okay let's get into it shall we first thing we need to do is prep our hair we're going to section a small portion of the front what would be my bangs if my hair was not all one goofy length and we're going to ponytail that. We're going to ponytail it within an inch of its life. I am wrapping this thing around about 10 times. We're going to swoop it back. Whoop. And then that's where your comb is going to go. And we tighten that down so the comb catches on the ponytail. Then we're going to section right here, which would be like a regular ponytail sort of section, kind of, sort of. And we're going to do that in a bun. We're going to bun it within an inch of our lives, like we are in the Royal Ballet. We're going to shove that under there so it does not move. Use multiple hair ties if you have to. Two or three hair ties to keep it down. Now go ahead and grab your hair piece. We are going to need that in a moment here. What am I doing? Oh! Oh no, no, I'm sectioning the bottom half of my hair to make one additional ponytail above the lower part of my hair. This ponytail will be split into two halves and one half will be twirled around the loop on the back of the tree in one direction and claw clipped. The other one will be twirled around the loop and the other direction and then claw clipped there that holds the loop down on my head. Now, what are we doing? Oh, we are splitting this front piece here. And because I have the length, I'm wrapping it around my bun again for more added security. I'm just tying it in a knot with itself. That's crazy. Now I'm looking at fiddling with those two halves there and I'm showing you that is what we're going to twirl around the loop on the back of the tree. The elastic band, I initially put it under that bottom ponytail that I made before I twirl it. Yes, yes, we see you're going to twirl it and clip it. Good job. Yes, on to, like that on both sides. So we insert the comb, so the tongs or the teeth of the comb, whatever they are, goes under that ponytail. We're going to pull this elastic down, and just for right now, we're going to put it under the bottommost ponytail, just so we can get situated before we put it all the way under the bottom part of the hair. See, and it's held on right there. Now we're taking the loop and we're sliding it over the bun, just like that, and sliding that comb back into place and flipping the, all of the hair so that the elastic band is all the way underneath. Now we're going to twirl. Generally, if I'm wearing this out, I will take the time to braid those two pieces so they're easier to twirl around the loop. I didn't do it in this case. There are also bobby pins involved in this. I'm sorry to say bobby pins and regular straight wig pins, the big ones. I use those 
to help hold this down, you can see when I pull it down, it goes back into position. So that's what we're aiming for. We twirl, we pull down, and we claw clip. And that keeps the back in place so that when I bend over to pick something up that I have dropped because it's going to happen, I can do so. Oh, hello. Here's me showing you how well it stays on my head. This thing is heavy. It's heavy. I promise. It, it's not light at all. I can shake my head. I can move it side to side. I can look up and down and backwards. All of that. That's very important when you're going out, when you're dressed in something like a big ball gown and you look like a princess because kiddos come up and they want to talk to you. You have to bend your head all the way down to say hello to kiddos. So this helps. This helps being as secure as possible. You do not want your tree to fall off your head and into somebody that you're talking to. Here is the ponytail bun. I clip it on. I pull the string on the back and hello. Now you can't see. Now generally the bottom part of my hair that's sticking out on the bottom, I will curl that to match the wig. I also take some hair pins, some straight pins, bobby pins, and make sure my battery packs are covered up. And then I spray it with glitter. Because, yes, glitter, yes. And here it is on, the final product. If you do not have hair that you can use to mount your tree on your head with, I would suggest maybe mounting it to a wig and putting a tie under your chin. It'll look cute. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you'd like to come hang out and chill sometime, maybe play a couple video games, you can catch me on Twitch. I'm going to try and release at least one video a month on this channel. I have many, many costumes I have to do upkeep on and revamp. I also have infinite amounts of sewing projects I have to do. Thank you again for watching. Have a fantastic holiday and a happy new year. Go forth, become your own tree. I will see you next time.